Hello and welcome to FRAP Talks, where we will discuss anything related to modular synthesis with FRAP Tools instruments. Today we will talk about this, or this, or even this. We will talk about gates. So in this system here we have many modules that can generate gates, but today we will focus on probably the most musical one, which is the Usta Sequencer. So this patch is pretty straightforward. We are using just a track one of our Usta Sequencer and CVA is controlling the pitch of our sound source, which in this case is the Breso Oscillator. We are using the final output, which is patched to the first channel of our CGM mixer. Gate A of track 1 is triggering the envelope on this phalistry here, which in turn controls the amplitude of the CGM VCA, therefore defining the notes of our melody. We can see that the sequence is already running, and we can see all the different note values on the 16 stages, but we can't hear a note. And the reason is that no gate is currently being outputted by the Usta sequencer. So let's select gate A, which is already patched to our envelope, and start inserting some values. If there is at least one LED lit in the stage arc around the stage encoders, Usta will generate a gate. And we can hear that a gate high corresponds to a note, and a gate low is corresponding to a pause. If we keep rotating the stage encoder, we will light up more and more LEDs of the stage arc. This corresponds to a longer gate, and if we light up all the 16 LEDs of the stage arc, the gate will be so long that it will tie the stage to the next one. Now we must note two things. The first one is that if we edit a CV layer, we are editing a CV value, while if we are editing a gate layer, we are editing its duration. And the reason is that we have already seen that a gate can have only two values, open or closed. And the second one is that we are actually increasing the duration of our musical event, but not the duration of the note. In other words, we are defining how long the gate stays open, but the time between two consecutive notes is always the same. So this is a change in articulation, but not in rhythm. If we want to have longer notes, we must edit their length in another layer. So we can select the length layer for track one, and we can see that all the stages have the same value, which is one time unit. We can set any stage to a higher value, and we will obtain a longer note, which in turn will create a more complex rhythm. Every stage's length can have a value uh, from zero to 16, and the unit is calculated on the clock division or multiplication we are running our track to. If we set the length of a stage to zero, we will remove it from the sequence and that's the huge difference from the gate because we've seen that if we set the gate to zero we will just create a pause but the length of that specific musical event will remain you may also have noticed that in this sequence all the stages have a blue LED and when we are editing the gate value, the blue LED stands for duration. However, if we push any stage encoder, we will immediately see that the stage LED will change its color from blue to green, and the playing behavior is changing accordingly. Now, Usta is outputting as many gates as the LEDs lit in the stage arc. This is often called a ratcheting effect. Ratcheting is a common technique that creates two or more gates in a defined time span. Okay, so in this patch we are using both gate channels of uh, track 1 and we are using them for two different purposes. Gate A is triggering an envelope that is controlling the VCA of our track. Gate B, on the other hand, is patched to the pink input of our Breso oscillator. In this way we have two overlapping rhythmic patterns. One is controlling the length of the gates of the main melody and the other one is controlling some accents here and there through the pinging of the wave folder circuit of our sound source. 
we can spice up the second gate by adding some ratchets here and there. In this other patch we are using CVB to trigger a second envelope on another Fadistri. The output of this envelope is then patched to the timber modulation input in the brain so oscillator. In this way, through the VCA of the timber modulation bus, we can route it to the four main parameters of the timber section, which are the two wave shapers, the wave folder, and the wave folder source. The gate B is set to the green color. In this way, it will output more gates than the ones that are triggering our main envelope. By doing so, we will obtain a second series of shorter envelopes, all equally spaced within our main musical events. By setting a different number of repetition per each stage, we will obtain a sort of wobble bass effect in the analog domain. And for this last patch here, we are using three tracks of the Usta sequencer. All of them are running at the same time resolution with the same stage length and pattern length. And to create a complex rhythm, we are just using the gate outputs. So track one, gate A, is providing a sort of a steady four on the floor kick drum by pinging the wave folder of the brain so oscillator. The four gate channels of tracks two and three are creating different rhythmic patterns. It is true that a gate signal has only two values, low and high, but this patch shows how many nuances you can get by just combining more than one gate generator. If you want to know more about gates or if you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to our channel and stay in touch with us.